In this video, I will be sharing some printmaking methods that you can try at home. You will first need a ruler, some sort of marking tool, and a material that is thick like a cardstock. For example, I am using a piece of junk mail. You could also use an actual piece of cardstock, a piece of cardboard, or a piece of packaging, such as a cereal box. A ruler, of course, will work best, but you could also use a tape measure or any other tool you can find at home to measure with. You will need to measure out a four inch by four inch square on the material that you've chosen. Take your scissors and cut out your four inch by four inch square. Your four inch by four inch square will serve as a template or a pattern, if you will. Lay it down on a styrofoam plate. After placing your pattern on the styrofoam plate, you will take your marking tool and trace around the entire pattern. After the pattern is traced down, take your scissors and cut out your square. We will be creating a design on the piece of styrofoam. You can draw directly onto the styrofoam, or if you prefer, you can draw your design on another piece of paper first. If you decide to draw your design out, on a different piece of paper rather than drawing directly onto the styrofoam. Simply trace your pattern onto a thin piece of paper like notebook paper or copy paper and then cut it out. I will now take a pencil and draw out my design. I am creating my design on this small square for a reason. When I print, I will actually print this square four times creating what is called radial symmetry or a radial pattern which I will explain later in the video. Because I am using pencil on paper, it allows me to correct mistakes as I go and perfect my design. My drawing is now complete and ready to be transferred to the styrofoam that I prepped earlier. Take your drawing and place it directly on top of the styrofoam. You can use tape to hold it in place so that it does not move around while transferring. I like to use a pen to transfer because a pen allows me to see exactly where I have traced and where I have not. In transferring, you are simply tracing over your entire design with the ink pen. When you trace, press firmly so that the design actually impresses into the styrofoam underneath. Careful not to push too hard because the ink pen can tear the paper. Make sure you traced over your entire design, then remove your drawing from the styrofoam. You will then be able to see how the design impressed into the styrofoam. If you find that your design is hard to see, you can simply go over it on the styrofoam with either an ink pen or a sharpie. Once your design is fully transferred onto the styrofoam, it is ready for the next step. This is my completed piece of styrofoam. I will now show you the steps to get to this point. Our styrofoam will act as our printing plate or a stamp if you will. We have to make a decision as far as what we will keep, so what we'll print, and what will we take away, what do we not want to print. In printmaking, anything that is left raised is called the relief. Those are the areas that will print. If you decide to push an area down, you're taking it away and those areas will actually not print. You can also simply trace over all of your lines and leave your design just as that. Sometimes it is smart to use your finger to double check and feel that you have pushed the styrofoam down enough. If the styrofoam is not pushed down all the way, you may have areas print that you did not necessarily want to print. Once you have decided which areas you don't want to print, so the areas that you're going to push down or take away, you'll begin pushing down or rubbing along those areas with your ink pen or a dull pencil. If anything too sharp is used, it will cut through the styrofoam. I like to use a dull pencil to push down the areas of the styrofoam that I do not want to print. An ink pen will work, but it can be kind of messy sometimes because as you're working your hand might rest in it and then it could smudge and smear all over your styrofoam. It is now time to think about the background of my design. I plan to push a majority of the background down or essentially take it away. When making the marks and lines within my background, I want them to radiate out from the center of my design. As I am making marks and lines within the background, I'm actually creating a texture. 
because I'm not pushing down all of the styrofoam. I'm leaving ridges in between. This texture in printmaking is referred to as chatter. Chatter helps distract from your actual design or image that you created. When I print, you'll be able to see the chatter and it will add a nice textural effect and really complement my design. Once you feel like you are done carving or pushing down your styrofoam, you may wanna take your finger over your printing plate and just feel and make sure that things are pushed down as far as they should be. If not, you can always go back and push down some more. Here is my completed plate. It is now time to move on to the printing process. I have a couple of different printmaking methods that I'd like to share with you so that you can try printing at home. The first printmaking method that I will be sharing is how to print with marker. For the first printmaking method, you will need the following, a fairly damp washcloth. Make sure that it is moist enough that when pushed on a piece of paper, it dampens the paper, but make sure it's not so wet that it is dripping. You will also need some white paper. A heavy quality drawing paper will work best, but any white paper should do. You will also need water soluble markers. Washable ones work best. Crazy Art, Crayola, any of those will do. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that we would be creating a radial design. It's important that I mark the center of my design on the back of my printing plate because each time we print, we will be rotating the printing plate. By marking the center of my design on the back of the printing plate, I will know exactly how to position the plate each time I print. Now it is time to choose the color for your print. You can simply use one color or you could use a variety of colors. That's the awesome thing about using markers in this method. You have the ability to use a variety of colors all within the same print. Use the markers to color on top of your printing plate. If it seems as though the marker is not coating very well, don't worry, it will print just fine. Be careful not to smear the marker as you go, and if it dries as you're working, that's okay. You now want to take your damp washcloth, lay it on the paper exactly where you plan to print. Push down on the washcloth so that the moisture transfers to the paper. Remember, you want the paper damp, but not dripping wet. Take your printing plate with the marker applied. Pay attention to where your center is. Remember you marked that on the back and lay the printing plate onto the dampened area of the paper. You now want to use your fist, your fingertips, your hands to push firmly on the printing plate so that the ink from the marker transfers to the dampened area of the paper. As you are rubbing on the printing plate, be sure not to move it whatsoever. Carefully move the styrofoam from the paper. You will then see your print revealed. Now it is time to repeat the process. No need to clean the plate in between printing. Just simply color directly on top of the printing plate again. Keep your original print beside you so that you can refer to it and ensure that you are coloring everything the exact same color as you did the first time. Take your dampened washcloth again and lay it in the area that you wish to print, pressing firmly, transferring the water to the paper. My paper has been dampened and my printing plate has been colored on once again. Now I have to line my center up and make sure that my printing plate is in line with my other print. I'm going to place it down on my paper and press firmly to transfer the ink. Here are my first two completed prints. You can see that one is a little bit more vibrant than the other. Perhaps I had more ink on that print. Maybe there was more moisture in the paper and so it took the ink a little bit better. There's no guarantee that every print is going to turn out exactly the same, but that's part of the fun in it. It's exciting and interesting to see how each one turns out. Here is my completed design. By rotating my printing plate, I was able to create a design with radial symmetry. You can see that parts of my design from my original plate, when connected with the print next to it, created new shapes and parts of the design. Once you are finished printing, you will want to gently clean your printing plate with some mild soap and water and dry it thoroughly. 
you will then be ready to try another method. The second printmaking method that I would like to share is how you can print at home with paint. For this printmaking method, you will need the following. Again, you will need paper. High quality paper works best, but you could use any paper you have at home, and you could also use any color of paper for this method. You will also need some thick acrylic paint and some sort of tool to apply the paint to your printing plate. In traditional printmaking, an artist will use printing ink. Printing ink is typically very thick and sticky. This is why you will need to find an acrylic paint that is very thick. Here are two different types of acrylic paint. The one in the tube is really thick and will work very, very well for this project. So this is what you want. Typical craft paint, acrylic paint in a bottle like this seems to be too thin. I've tried it before and it just doesn't work out as well. So make sure whatever you are using is very thick and not too thin. In traditional printmaking, an artist will use what is called a brayer to apply ink to a printing plate or block. The brayer has a roller on it, which is made of rubber, so it is a firm surface. It's not like a paint roller that absorbs the paint. I will show you a tool that I found at home that will act like a brayer. As I was looking for tools to use in applying the paint, I thought of this toy that my kids had in their Play-Doh accessories. I thought it rolls, it has a hard surface, so maybe it would act like a brayer. So we're going to give it a try. So if you happen to have a tool like this or something similar to it at home, you'll want to squirt your paint out on a flat surface and roll the paint around in multiple directions to coat the roller. After loading the roller with the paint, simply roll it over your plate. You'll want to make sure that you do not have too much paint on the roller as it can seep down into the lower areas of your plate and result in a bad print. When applying the paint, you want to keep it out of the lower areas. The paint should be applied to the raised areas or again what is called the relief. You could use a brush to lightly brush the paint across the relief. You could also use a sponge and sponge the paint onto the printing plate. Here I use the roller from the Play-Doh accessories to roll the paint onto the plate. Just like the marker method, you will want to push around on the plate to adhere the paint to the paper and then carefully remove. I'm now going to try a small piece of sponge to apply the paint. When I apply it, I will dab very lightly so that I do not push excess amounts of paint down into the lower areas or the carved areas of my printing plate. For this project, I'm using the same process as I did with the marker print, rotating my plate each time. Here are the first two prints. The first one was with the roller, the second one with the sponge. I think with the roller there was a little too much paint and I think with the sponge I got better results so I think I'm going to stick with the sponge for the remainder of the project. Here is the finished product. You'll notice that some areas may have had a little too much paint, some areas not quite enough. It just takes some practice, maybe even some experimenting with different tools to apply the paint. Remember in printmaking that no two prints are ever exactly alike. For fun, here are a couple additional ideas for printmaking at home. Even though I cut a perfect square and created a radial design, know that you can cut your styrofoam into virtually any shape. You can print any shape using the methods that I taught you, using marker, or you can print with paint. You could even create a fun background here is one that I created with watercolor. You could use crayon, colored pencil, anything that you have at home. You can then print on top of your background. It's best to use paint to print on your background as marker could react differently to different materials. So if you're going to print on a background, be sure to print with paint. 
One last thing before you start creating. I personally find it fun to experiment with different materials and supplies. Here are some ideas that I have not tried myself, but maybe you might want to try, especially if you do not have the materials from the video. If you do not have styrofoam plates at home, you could also use a styrofoam takeout container. When using the printing with marker method, if you have a set of watercolor paint at home, you could try using the watercolor instead of marker. When using the printing with paint method, you could also try applying the paint with a cosmetic sponge or a paper towel. If you find yourself searching for paper, there are other things you could use, such as a paper bag or the non-slick side of some freezer paper. If you have paint at home but find that it's not the type that I suggested, don't be afraid to try it. You never know, what you have at home might just work.